In this lecture, we'll talk a little bit more detail about the UART protocol, which is the serial protocol that we're going to use for debugging, but also for other things. So we'll give some detail about that. All right, so here's a, a picture of what UART communication looks like. So you've got two sides of the communication, the sender, the transmitter, and the receiver. The transmitter is TX, the receiver is RX. Uh, and you can see in between the transmitter and the receiver, there's a serial, a single wire. Now, generally, there, uh, there might be two, but uh, there might be a ground, but let's say a single wire, serial out of the transmitter, serial into the receiver. Now, if we look at the transmitter side, you've got parallel data coming in on the left. So that would be typically a byte or some chunk of data. Uh, so you, so say, let's say it's eight bits, an eight bit byte. So eight bits comes in. The transmitter sends those bits on serial out. The bits get received by the receiver on serial in, and then it creates parallel data and sends that back out on parallel out to the rest of the system. And there are these status bits. So the data is serialized by TX. What that means is, say eight bits come in on parallel in, they get serialized, sent one at a time, one bit at a time on serial out. And they're deserialized on the receiving end. So they come in one bit at a time, and then they get packaged into chunks of probably of eight bits. Uh, the status data, there's a status on the TX and the RX on both sides. The status is usually indicating the, uh, the state of the transmit and receive buffers. So what that means is uh, inside TX and RX, inside the transmit and receiver, you typically got, typically got buffers. So for instance, on the receiving end, you, you're probably going to have some receiving buffer. So you'll re be receiving one bit at a time and filling up a buffer. And once the buffer is full, say, it's group, say the buffer is eight bits long, right? Once the buffer is full, then you've got a byte and you can send it out on parallel out to the rest of the system. So uh, the, when these buffers are full, you can't receive anymore, right? So the receiver can't receive if the buffer is full. Also, the sender can't send if its buffer is empty. So the status bits are basically information about that that goes back to the code running on the transmitter receiver to tell it if you should be able to send a new piece of data or receive a new piece of data and so forth used for flow control. Make sure that there's a constant amount of, or not constant, but at least a regular amount of flow. So specifically, what you want to make sure is that the receiver is receiving data at the same rate that the transmitter is transmitting it. Right? If the receiver is receiving data, data faster than the transmitter, then the transmitter can't keep up, and the receiver will be stopped. And vice versa, if the receiver is receiving data slower, then the transmitter will be too fast, and it'll have to stop. So you want to match those rates so that you don't lose any data. So you are timing diagram. This is a, uh, an approximate timing diagram, but this is the idea. So remember that there is one, th what this timing diagram is showing is showing, the, it's, uh, showing you the value on that serial wire between the transmitter and the receiver, the value that is on that wire. Now remember that value is one bit and it's digital. So we're assuming it's either high or low. And so uh, you can see in this timing diagram, this, the, the, the time is the x-axis, right? So the signal is, it starts off high, then it goes low, then there are these eight green blocks, okay? So in those eight green blocks, those are eight bits that are being sent, can be high or low, and then it goes high again at the end of the, the communication. So let's describe, break this down, uh, this communication. So this is an example of sending one byte of data via UART. So the first bit is the start bit, okay? And that initiates the transfer. So the start bit is that first bit where it starts off high by default, but as soon as you want to start sending, sending some data, it goes low. So you can see that first bit, that first uh, chunk of time there, it's low for one chunk of time, right, for one unit. That is the start bit. Now after that, the next bits are the data. So all those eight bits that are green, those are data. And those can be high or low, right? Depend they're green and you, we don't draw them as high or low. They can be either, high or low. So you send those, uh, those bits high or low for a certain period of time. And, send, and let's say you send it in a chunk of eight, which is common but not... You can change that, but say eight bits. Then the last bits are the stop bits. So you see, after you've sent the eight bits, the signal is high for, uh, in this case, two chunks of time. Uh, those are called stop bits, and those tell the receiver, okay, I'm done sending now. Okay? So this is how the, the start bit and the stop bit are needed by the receiver to know when communication is starting and when it's ceasing. And in between that, you send the data. So each bit that's being sent has a certain duration. It's sent on the wires for a certain period of time. Uh, each bit is transmitted for a fixed duration. 
This duration has to be known by both the transmitter and the receiver. So before you can do serial communication, both the transmitter and the receiver have to know every bit is going to be either high or low for a certain fixed period of time, some number of microseconds, let's say, or milliseconds or whatever it is. You have to know that ahead of time. So that has to be configured. Uh, so the baud rate determines the duration. So the duration we'll call T, this, the period. T is the common uh, letter that people use for the period. So the duration is T, the duration of a single bit. The baud rate is the frequency. It's the inverse of T. So uh, baud rate is the number of transitions per second, or the maximum number of transitions per second. And it's typically measured in bits per second, because you can send one bit in every transition. Uh, T, the period, equals 1 over F. So if you know the baud rate, you invert that, and that gives you the period. So uh, for instance, common baud rate is 9,600 baud. 9,600 baud, if you invert that 1 over 9,600, is approximately 104 microseconds. So what that's saying is that if you have agreed on a 9,600 baud uh, rate of transfer, then that means that when the transmitter is sending a bit, it keeps that bit high or low, if it's 0, 1, high or low, keeps that, holds that bit for 104 microseconds, approximately. And that's what the receiver expects. The transmission rate is actually less than the baud rate. So the baud rate is the rate at which you're sending these bits. But remember that in addition to sending the data bits, you're sending, there's padding. There are other bits that you send. The start bit, right? That's a bit that you have to send, but just to initiate the transfer, but it's not actually containing real data, right? So that's something of a waste. It's an overhead. Put it like that. It's not a waste. You need it, but it's an overhead. It's, it's a bit of time that you send, but you can't send real data. Also, the stop bits. Say you're using two stop bits at the end. Those are two more bits that are, that are not sending data, right? So the transmission rate of after the data transmission rate is actually less than the baud rate uh, because there's start bits, stop bits, and also maybe a parity bit. We'll talk about that. So there are extra bits that you're sending, uh, but the baud rate is the, the maximum uh, data transmission rate, but you can't actually achieve that. Uh, you need start bits, stop bits, and parity bit, which we'll talk about later. Thank you. Mm -hmm.